This review covers the all-new Tooling 71 Boss 351 Mustang from Ravel. It's a 125 scale kit number 14512. It was released in the Euro Boxing in 2022 and it's rated as skill level 4 for the intermediate builder. Now we'll show you what's in the kit and along the way I'll give you some tidbits about the original vehicle. As you can see, it's well packaged. There are many separately bagged sprues and trees here. And as you can see, the window glass uh, is pretty thin. It's clear. The rest of the parts are very cleanly molded. Uh, you see the steering wheel there. That's the standard uh, that was in the 351. And notice that there's a separate um, engine bay there so that it's much more easy to detail. Now the Boss 351 was a perfect blend of the previous Boss 302 and 429 Mustangs and nearly as rare with only 100, uh, 1,806 being produced and all in one year of 1971. Now you see the chrome trees here have separate bumpers and that makes a much more uh, accurate looking model. Now the golden age of the muscle cars was closing quickly. As you see here, the Ram Air hood scoop has very authentic details and the proportions seem to be very nice with high back bucket seats. Now, the, those scoops were feeding a specially modified 330 horsepower 351 cubic inch Cleveland V8 and it had plenty of power. You see the instruction manual here in the new uh, style and uh, it's quite a step up from the old, um, you know, units that we used to get in Revell kits. It, it kind of mimics uh, some of the more modern uh, ones. And uh, you can see the do's and don'ts on the left. And also, it has uh, very nice paint callouts. Uh, and these are uh, uh, quoted in the uh, Revell email uh, enamels. So that's the colorations and callouts that you'll see. And if you noticed, um, each one of these sprues has a sprue number in the black uh, square in the upper left corner. So they're easy to uh, see and find the parts when you go looking inside the kit. Now, as you can see here, uh, they're very detailed instructions. They're basically um, uh, somewhat like the um, Mobius style, uh, but it's got its own, own character. These are nicely... Uh, illustrated instructions. It even shows you a mask there for the hood and some really good detailing for the final construction. This kit has 129 parts and uh, when you're done the dimensions are about seven and a half inches long, three inches wide and two and a quarter inches high with some great decals. The proportions look just great and this is an exciting new kit. Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. Here are the contents of the kit. As you can see, everything is crisp. Uh, this is a brand new mold, and uh, it's got brand new parts. Uh, they should be crisp and clean, but they've been very thoughtful about where to uh, place the uh, sprue uh, mounting points on the parts so that they're mostly hidden. Uh, as you can see the chrome is bright. The windows are very clear. We'll be using uh, mostly uh, contact uh, type or styrene type cements uh, you know that are um, such as uh, CA glues and tube glues etc. But you know we'll be using a variety of glues uh, and adhesives. Now remember uh, use the um, safety and use guidelines for any of the parts uh, and products that you see in the uh, review. The body in this new uh, Mustang kit is exceptional. Uh, the proportions and the features, um, all of the contours, they, they're just perfect. Um, it's, it's a very uh, exciting kit for uh, uh, the modelers to see these brand new kits uh, with modern tooling looking like this. Here's a closer look at those decals. Uh, as you can see, you get both silver and black stripes, which uh, complement the uh, standard colors that the uh, Boss 351 came in. And also, just a, a plethora uh, of other decals 
uh, just about everything that has a mark on the entire original car is represented by a decal here. Um, the register is very good. Um, the, the parts come off of the paper very well. They're, they're just the right amount of uh, durability. You will occasionally, however, find on some of the really small ones uh, that the register is off. So as you see here, the Mustang gas cap emblem has a little silver trim in the upper left there. Just trim it off so that you've got a good clean decal. Not to take anything away from the kit's decals, I've elected to use some of these uh, images from Best Model Car Parts. I think that um, they have a little bit more visibility, um, even if they're not exactly um, representative of the uh, actual vehicle. They still do a really good job of replicating them, along with a little bit of um, highlighting there that makes them more visible as a model part. So I'll be using these uh, instead of, for example, the gauge decals and some of the dash there, and, and the license plates as uh, uh, replacements for the kit's decals. I'll also show you how to um, uh, make a little bit more authentic uh, a looking model by um, making your own decal for certain things like um, this underhood air collector um, that I'm going to apply um, to uh, cover up or should say identify uh, the area of that uh, unit under the hood. The first thing that I did was to put uh, the major body pieces, uh, the hood, the, the body, and the the chassis and interior parts uh, into some um, soapy water, warm water, and a soft toothbrush to scrub any release agents or fingerprints, etc., that might be on the surface. Once you get the parts uh, nicely cleaned off, uh, rinse them off in cool water and then uh, set them aside to dry on a, on a nice soft towel or paper towels. Then we'll start doing some research, including looking at uh, internet pictures of your subject and starting to study the color guide. So here you see um, the color guide uh, that I used. You see the list there. And I used um, highlighters to identify the places where on those uh, colors uh, get used on the parts on the sprues. And that way, uh, later on, I'll be able to take all the parts that are associated with that color and give them, uh, you know, some basic uh, painting and detailing, uh, at least base coats uh, for that. The one thing that I, I wish uh, Re Revell had done, uh, the new Revell, uh, compared to the old Revell and their instruction sets, was to list the part numbers and the part names together. Uh, it just helps with identification. But um, this is the new uh, process, so uh, we'll have to learn how to live with it. One of the really nice things in uh, the new instruction sheets are the use of sprue identification uh, marks. Uh, in this case, you see I'm going to outline uh, the, um, the sprue identification mark for the sprue number H. See, and that is located up in the upper left hand corner of each of the sprues that are laid out in the instructions, uh, the pictorial part. And as you can see, uh, it makes it very easy to find uh, the parts uh, in the kit. You just go for that sprue uh, uh, and by the identification letter and look for the part there. And now we're going to break out some of the associated parts uh, and clean up the body. And we're going to take out that brace and carefully trim off the hood. Uh, I use some, you know, really nice um, fine point uh, shears to do that with. And then at one point you just flex it off uh, because that gives a clean break. And then we're going to uh, get these staged because they're all the same color, or at least I thought so. As it turns out, um, the panels, the, uh, the front panel and the uh, back panel on the underside, the stone panel on the roll pan, uh, are not body color like the instructions say. So we're going to clean up the uh, uh, lines here, the uh, you know all the parting lines and all the features on the model, and get the these parts ready for painting. One of the handiest items in my um, toolbox is this dead center drill starter from Scale Pro Shops. Uh, it it's just a fluted miniature uh, uh, auger uh, that does a perfect job. Uh, with its, um, you know, it's got a hardened tip of locating uh, precisely where you want to make a hole. And so I'll use this to open up the holes in the trunk for the uh, back spoiler. So it was simply um, 
place it where you, you precisely want your hole and then uh, once you get it in just give it a little wiggle and then you twist it between your thumb and your finger to give it a little augering um, you know action and that'll pretty quickly uh, locate the hole right exactly where you want it. Now we're going to do some test fitting uh, with the hood. Uh, even with a precisely molded um, model, you still need to test fit. And in this case, I find that the hood was a little tight. It fits perfectly, but there's no paint on it yet. So I decided to just take a little bit off uh, of the sides, especially at an angle, so that it will just sit down into uh, the fender there and make sure that there's enough clearance uh, so that it uh, doesn't get pushed up and doesn't fit properly after you get it all painted. So it's just a matter of using a, a medium or coarse sanding stick in a sense uh, to take some of the material off there from the sides and the front uh, and then just make sure that you do it um, the same on both sides and the same back and forth. You know, you don't want to take a, and put a bow in your hood. So go ahead and do that. And the test fitting you'll find is critical even uh, for parts like these. So let's try it again here and see how it works. There we've got a little bit of play, see? And so now right along the edge, you know, you, you can see there's a little spot and that's room for paint. At this point, I want to try and determine whether I can uh, install the, the roll pan and the stone pan uh, and still have room to get the chassis in and out uh, in order to paint the whole thing as a unit because, as I mentioned, the instructions said they were the same color as the body. Turns out they're not and will not be needing that, but I'll also know then that uh, the chassis will have to go into position later. So, as you can see, I've got to uh, unclip it, uh, you know, from the sprue attachment points. And then we're going to um, tape the, um, the front and rear roll pans into position and then try and see if it fits. So, we used, uh, you know, some uh, side cutters here and pull that, uh, that piece out. And then uh, we will uh, tape uh, the, the, the front and rear pans into position. Uh, oh, by the way, see those black marks there on the uh, roof inside? Uh, those are e ejector pin marks, and those will uh, have to be addressed later. Oh, don't forget the mirror. You saw that up at the top there. Uh, that gets painted body color, too. So we're going to add some tape to this front pan and then tape it into position. And uh, as you can see, it's kind of uh, a pretty decent fit for the front pan here. Uh, when you get to the rear pan, that's another proposition. It really just rests on the edge of the rear fenders. So there it is in position. And so now we're going to uh, take and uh, check the chassis fit. As you can see, it's in almost. It didn't quite fit down underneath the front pan. So we know from that that uh, we're not going to have room uh, to put the whole thing together and then uh, add the chassis and the um, in interior parts later on. We're going to have to do that um, piecework. But as it turns out, the front and rear roll pans are actually just black mat. And so they can be glued into position later um, and uh, pre-painted before they're even installed. Now here's where we'll um, start working on some of those um, ejector pin marks that I mentioned to you earlier. Uh, as you can see, the inside of the roof there, there's uh, there's about six of them. And you'll be able to see those if you look up uh, from in the windows, uh, the side windows. Maybe not the front so much uh, because of distortion, but here's what we do. We're going to take uh, some of the um, 3M uh, glazing uh, putty, and we're going to thin it down a little bit with some acetone. Uh, you can see adding uh, just a little bit of acetone there, then stir it all up. Uh, this helps it uh, with its consistency. It it uh, flows a little better, gets into the crevices uh, more deeply, and it evaporates uh, and it dries out much more quickly than just the putty by itself. So you just uh, dab that into position uh, over the injector pin marks. And the reason is because... <laughs> That um, roof is textured, and you're going to want it to look nice, so you, you can uh, get away with some small pin marks like this, just filling them and then sanding them smooth 
uh, later. So right now we're just going to add some of the um, thinned down uh, glazing compound and uh, fill in those ejector pin marks. They're pretty shallow, but uh, nonetheless, if you're going for a good look, you're going to want to fill those in and clean them up. And now that we've got the uh, body, um, you know, worked uh, worked up there, we're going to work on the hood, which also has about uh, five prominent uh, pin marks on the edges uh, of the hood. So we're going to fill those in, of course, with a little putty, and then uh, set those aside to dry. And once they have dried, as you can see here, um, they're hard now. Uh, so we can go ahead and uh, start to finish those off and uh, we use a variety of tools. Uh, one of my um, favorite and handiest tools is this uh, power sander. It's a, a proton uh, type unit and it just vibrates. But you'll find there's still room for the old, um, old school sandpaper uh, with progressively finer grits to get an even smoother and uh, flatter finish. Uh, so don't be afraid to do what you need to do. Uh, get in there and use uh, a progressives to make sure that you get a nice look so you get a clean uh, hood. And um, we'll use additional tools on the uh, body. So once we get started with the uh, power sander, you see again how that works. But it's kind of narrow, it's difficult to get in there. So we'll also be using another tool for that. Now power tools are great and sometimes they don't, they're kind of awkward. Sometimes they don't quite fit and you have to reach for a hand tool. In this case because it's so close to the edge, you can't really get your power tool in there. So we use just a, an angle file, you know, uh, that's on, uh, on, it's like a stick file. And then even, once again, resort to the old hand uh, sheet uh, and go ahead, get in there and smooth it out until you're satisfied that it's going to match the contour of the roof and look good. Well, we have finished up the, um, um, you know, patches that we, we uh, repaired. And now we've got to paint the underside of the hood and the uh, inside of the body with a medium gray to kind of cover up the um, contrast difference between the patches and the white. So with uh, some uh, standard medium gray primer we'll, we'll get that accomplished and following that uh, we have to return the, the uh, color uh, to white um, especially inside the body of course uh, but also under the hood because um, we'll be spraying orange uh, and um, it will need a nice white reflective uh, uh, substrate color in order to look proper both on the top and the bottom of the hood. Well, we have uh, masked off the interior of the body and taped the uh, hood in place, which has already been painted uh, orange. Uh, and Ford used to call this a Calypso Coral for 70 and 71, so... That's the official color here, but we're going to give it some uh, nice light coats. Uh, we don't want to disturb too much of the detail. So we'll be um, putting a, a nice even coat on uh, both these assemblies uh, together to make sure that the colors match. And also the mirrors have been placed uh, on the door sills uh, to get them uh, colored into the correct uh, shade as well. With the body now in color coat, we can start to do some detailing. And I think bare metal foil, you want some fresh stuff, is the best way to represent trim. The windshield needs some along with the, the side windows and also the backlight here, which I do in detail. And by the way, I'm going to uh, use a couple of tape stripes for that. You see them here to use as uh, making the separators. Uh, a lot of uh, modelers don't include separators on the trim and the backlight has a couple of them. Now we're going to use a sharp blade first to go around the trim area. Now it's nicely done uh, and then we're going to turn it around after we get uh, that little channel done and then we're going to use the backside of the blade to deepen that channel. 
This groove will give you an excellent way to trim your chrome uh, tape after you get it applied and keep you from going off into the body. But you have to be very careful when you put it on in the first place. Uh, a lot of um, you know hobbyists will use a Sharpie or, or even a chrome pen, but I think that you get your best results from the old uh, bare metal foil type of uh, foil trimming. Don't forget those side marker lights. Uh, a lot of times those are mm, overlooked. But if you put a little reflective tape on there and trim it off, you get the bezel all chrome uh, trim plated. And then it also provides a reflection uh, surface for your turn signal, um, your reds and ambers. It gives you a, a much more authentic look. And, you know, it's just like any other trim. You just uh, put it into the crevices and use a, a blunt uh, uh, instrument like a toothpick. And make sure that uh, you get it all covered and tacked down really well. And then you just trim it off um, like you would a windshield uh, you know, piece of trim. And then it really looks nice. You just have to be very careful. So I'm going to um, also put in a, a little um, a URL to one of the other uh, demos that I've done online here that really details the backlight and how that is um, done in its entirety. So for a more uh, authentic look, I recommend you use something like this for uh, a real authentic trim. Next, we're gonna use a fine point Sharpie to add some uh, color to the engine bay. Uh, much of that area is a kind of a semi-gloss black. And we're gonna start by going underneath here for that innermost ridge um, inside the fender portion there. That that uh, little piece there is uh, black, as well as um, uh, the cowl, of course. And along that ridge, you just need to go ahead and uh, make sure that it's got a nice, even look to it. Um, Sharpies are a lot more accurate than side brushing something that narrow. And next, uh, you know, once that's done, we're going to paint that um, cowl and also the radiator support up front with some semi-gloss black uh, to give it a nice finished even look. Now here's another look at the uh, hood mask that they put in the instructions. I'm not quite sure how you'd use it um, in this respect, uh, so I decided to go about this in a different way. We do want to get that um, flat black area painted, but what I did was I made a photocopy of the decals and I used the portion of the stripes to make my pattern for the hood. Uh, you'll see how I did that uh, in just a minute. We are also going to do the underhood, but we're going to start with this pattern here that uh, is cut out from the, the actual decal and sized to fit the hood. And I put a couple of notches at the center of the stripes where they would be, right up there. And I'm going to put a little mark and also down there where the uh, hood latches are and in front. You need to locate those positions right in the center of where the stripe will be later so that you can mask off the exterior to paint your, your hood. So right, that, right in the center, I put a little notch there and I'm adding that uh, mark with my ultra fine point Sharpie. Um, it'll, it's black and the stripes will be back black and cover it right up. So then we'll have an, a precise place uh, for um, adding the tape into position to be right in the center of the stripe so that we cover it up on the masked side and also the uh, color side. And this will give us our positioning to then go ahead and uh, paint the hood after we get it all masked off. So I wanted to make sure that those are nice and clear and I know exactly where they are. They just have to be black. Then you just take your uh, mask off. And then we get that uh, ready, and we're going to tape it all up around the exterior for paint. Next, we'll use some Tamiya 1 8 inch curve striping tape uh, to tape off the contours right in the center of the stripes where we had made our marks. After that, we'll use a little yellow tape to go around the edges and some green tape to fill in the bottom of the hood so that we can spray the entire top of the hood uh, with our flat black a matte color and it's, it's, this stuff is stretchy the white stuff and then your basic uh, masking tape is all that you need to 
um, you know, make sure that you don't get paint on any of the rest of the hood, which is already body color painted and ready to go. The um, top of the hood there has been painted with some Krylon um, satin black, uh, and it's got a matte finish to it. It looks just like the original, and of course, uh, right where the center of the stripes would go. Also, you also see there's the the hood latches and the springs there. Springs have had a little black wash in them to uh, bring out the definition on that. And the decals, um, of course, uh, that's um, one piece decal, but we're going to section that. Now, also, you're going to find uh, some extra detailing here as we are going to um, use that to, uh, part up there at the top, which was a um, homemade decal to make the underhood air collector. And it was just used, I just used a simple um, uh, drawing program, and I had copied, literally copied the uh, uh, hood, uh, and then uh, used the drawing program to superimpose some simple shapes. Also, we're going to add a couple of uh, collector pods uh, from uh, some of the uh, sprue. And so they go right there where those little dots are, uh, are embossed on the hood already. They're not the right shape size or definition um, and it was a compromise I'm sure to keep the cost down and make sure the hood closes so we're going to put those pieces all together and uh, you're going to find first that you you got to clean things up you have to remove paint and chrome from anything you want to glue together so the hinges here are scraped clean on the bottom and um, just remember uh, that that's just a maxim you just have to make sure that you've got a good gluing surface and so uh, we're going to take this um, uh, hood of course and we have to remove the paint that was in the groove uh, that was meant for the spring so you just scrape it off um, there's probably a number of ways to get in there and do that but I find this is just about the simplest and most effective you, you simply use a, um, a hobby knife and do it now here's what we're going to do with the um, uh, decal. Now I made this decal just by printing it out on some decal paper and it goes right in there. It's not e at the exact shape uh, as it was made but we're going to trim it so that it's um, correctly proportioned on the edges. We're just going to cut it out. It's a simple process. You just do that. Now we're going to size it up, make sure it fits and then if you need a little more trimming y you do a little more trimming but this is the the concept. I just made this decal to represent that collector which isn't in the kit. Otherwise you have to try and paint it into you know into place for an authentic look. Now we're going to add a little of the um, setting solution here to, to soften up the decal and make sure that it adheres to all those little um, deep contours that are there. So that will give it a little bit of definition. And We've got the, uh, the decal ready to go here. It's been dipped in water. So we're going to uh, place that into position. And uh, you just uh, slide the paper out. Make sure you got plenty of water there so that you can position this uh, large and thin decal. Uh, and you'll have to take a little um, uh, time to make sure that you position it properly. Now once it's in place, um, you know, uh, you can you can kind of just nudge it, make sure that all of the edges are down, and then uh, you can go back over it later uh, once it's tacked into position. You see the holes there for the scoops. This is uh, a nice touch with the Revell kit uh, that wasn't on previous kits. So go ahead and put that exactly into place, and then later you can add some uh, you know a setting solution on top. Once it's uh, positioned in in good, just dab it dry and get it ready uh, to set and dry. From internet photos I found there's a, a collector pod on the underside of this large uh, black unit that's uh, an air intake. And there's also one similar to that on the uh, on the um, air cleaner. So anyway I'm going to make a couple of those um, pseudo pods that would go on the uh, decal that we provided. There's a couple of bumps on the bottom so I'm just going to cut it off with a uh, micro saw and uh, it's just a, a couple of pieces from the sprue so we'll take those and then we'll go ahead and finish them off by by sanding both sides and making it flat uh, so that it's got a nice smooth edge to it and 
also a little bite for uh, adhesive. So just run that across you know, a sandpaper stick. Next, we're going to work on the decals and this requires cutting this decal for the hood into three pieces right along the edge there so that you can match it up uh, with the center stripe later on. Now we'll take off the second one and then once those are off uh, we'll take and add a little of the uh, setting solution uh, to one side and go ahead and install that side to get the um, sequence done. So just uh, slide it off. Use plenty of water to uh, to get it uh, to loosen from the backing paper and then uh, position it into place uh, approximately and then we'll take a, a toothpick or something uh, you can use you know whatever is available and and actually put it into uh, precisely where it needs to be uh, located so go ahead and um, uh, finish that uh, that side up and then we'll start working on the other uh, pieces um, the center stripe will go next and it will connect of course the two bridges so um, location is uh, pretty important um, you have to line it up and then uh, once your three are in place, we can add the Ram Air uh, decals to the side of the hood. They're a nice touch for this uh, Ravel kit. Uh, to put those into place, they're white so they stand right out against the matte black uh, hood section there. Position it uh, precisely into place and uh, just use the internet pictures to determine where that goes. And as you can see, she's really looking, uh, really looking good now. Well, with the uh, hood basically finished on top, next we're going to turn it over and start working on the bottom side. You see the hinges there? And the springs have been uh, added uh, a little black wash so that they, they look nice. Uh, we're also going to um, put in the hood latches. They're nicely chromed uh, pieces. They're separate, so they have a nice sharp distinction to them. And a little uh, liquid glue there. Now, you've got to scrape the uh, plating off the bottom side for these to stick. But just uh, put them into place and they have a, a little notch in the bottom that corresponds to the one in the hood there. So they're actually aligned in a, in a specific way. So go ahead and put them into place and then just, uh, you know, give them a twist so that they fit right in. Once you've got the, um, the hood latches in place and they've set so they don't fall out when you turn it over, it's time to glue the hood hinges into place too. And they go right into the slots that are provided there. Just make sure uh, that... You know, you scrape off the paint there before you do that, and that they are nice and straight. They're, uh, you know, exactly horizontal and are uh, vertical, and that they are uh, in the right position. And next, uh, we're going to add a little bit of glue to the uh, one of the uh, little uh, air pods there. Or not air pods, actually, it's a collector. I'm, I'm not really sure if it's for air or for water, but um, it's obviously a. a reservoir collector so just to glue that into position in the same place that the nubs are on the hood uh, from the uh, embossed and engraved portion so go ahead and get those uh, to stick and then your your hood is basically done so let's try it once the hinges are dry uh, as a, uh, a dry fit and make sure that it works next we'll be adding the uh, major body decals to the body and as you can see, of course, I chose the black ones to complement the orange. And uh, there's uh, some tricks to this. Uh, and uh, they can make or break your model. Uh, decals are very important to the overall look. So I'm going to show you how to install the uh, large body panel um, decal. Now these go on the underside, uh, you know, below, almost below the door. And um, you need to use plenty of warm water to soften them up. You'll also need to use setting solution to get them to um, uh, soften up and then adhere to the body panel lines. That's a two-part solution that I use uh, from uh, Microset, and it works very well. Once again, dip it into some warm water and uh, let it set about 30 seconds, and then you can start to remove it. Make sure you get some adhesive on the back side by just kind of rubbing it around on the uh, uh, paper and then you can go ahead and slide it off. Um, I always uh, I'm right-handed so I hold it generally with the right hand uh, and then uh, pinch it at the forward portion and then slide it off. You want to get it as close as you can to where it's going to be 
But once it's there, since you've got some solution on your body, slide it into position. In this case, it overlaps on both ends. It goes around uh, the fenders there into the radiuses of the wheels. Now, there are going to be <laughs> some issues to do uh, and take care of that too. And we'll show you that in a second. But for now, smooth it out. Make sure that it's in position. And then uh, it's exactly registered with the lines uh, being, you know, horizontal uh, and in parallel to the door panel and make sure that it's in the right space. Once you've got that into position, then we can start to work with the overhang. And those are the uh, parts that go around the bottom and around the ends. Now, I always um, use a little trick. I cut this so that it actually will fold properly over the ends. If there is any kind of a, a hint of the body, you know, from the cut, you can simply um, use a little paint to finish that up. You can see here, I'm, I'm making sure that it fits both the radius underneath and uh, it stays in proper position to the cut line. After it has gotten set, go ahead and add some more uh, solution to the edges to make sure that they curl around and wrap tightly to the body to make sure that uh, they are going to stay in position and um, adhere to the body properly. If you need to, go ahead and uh, push them around until they stick to where you want them to go. Now I'm going also to uh, show you some of the other issues that you might deal with. And you may want to use something like a, a wet cotton swab uh, to push out any air bubbles or, or any water that's trapped underneath. Um, make sure that you get those out of there before your decal dries because after that it's a repair job. Uh, and so you want to try and prevent that by starting with uh, something of, an, of a nice soft tissue nature to remove those issues before they become problems. Later on, we'll show you that this piece in the back, uh, it's a real wraparound, and it, uh, it requires a little extra work. We're going to show you the stripes first because they are very critical to the look of the Boss 351. I'm going to start with this piece that goes right over the front um, marker light. And the reason for that is because it can give you your direction and, and tone for where you need to position the other stripes. So it is precisely fit, uh, and, and they did a good job, Ravel did, of, of making this um, uh, position proper. Um, they could have messed it up, but it's pretty close. Um, the lower one is a little tighter, but this one is just right. Once again, plenty of fluids uh, setting solutions. Make sure that you've got the ability to move that thing around so that it is put precisely into position. And it might take a little extra work, and you may need to even loosen the decal up again if it sticks uh, in order to make sure that it's right. It has to be right, or it's just going to look off when you, you when you look at it from the um, side. So I use a, a, a hobby knife to push my decals around. You just barely touch them, uh, but they always are able to pick up and move your decal. So once you've got it in position, again, Put a little setting solution on there. Make sure it doesn't move. Once you're satisfied, you know, with the look of it, um, give it uh, another uh, coat of the two-part solution. And then uh, just uh, set that up on end. And the reason for that is uh, because we're going, to, um, we're going to work around it now. We're going to uh, have to wick off some of that setting solution so that it will dry in position without loosening up just by moving it around. So I use the edge and just the filaments of a piece of uh, paper towel to wick off any excess water. You can see it absorbing there without moving that decal. Uh, and it's kind of important because it hastens the drying process and prevents it from accidentally being uh, slipped around or moved on its own. Just the edge is all you need. Next we'll work on the lower stripe and this is a very fine decal. Uh, it takes uh, a little bit of uh, patience, and you have to be careful uh, to, I pull it off from the left to the le left to the right so as to not curl up that tiny little uh, tailpiece, and that goes underneath your marker and uh, back towards the fender there. 
and uh, it just barely fits into position, but that's exactly the way it should. Um, good to good uh, decal to scale. So we loosen it up, make sure it's got some uh, stickum on it, and then uh, go ahead and slide it into position. Now um, manipulating it and putting it into place is, you know, it's kind of tricky. Be careful. Don't uh, don't bend it and uh, make it fold. But um, if you put this one in place just right, it really it really uh, gives a nice finish to the front end there. Next, we add some decal setting solution for the main side stripe, and uh, that of course is the one that really stands out because it's right midship. So we're going to um, go ahead and soak that stripe in some warm water, plenty of warm water, and make sure it stays warm. Um, and then we're going to, um, you know, as we always have, we're going to rub it around a little bit, make sure it's got some adhesive on the back side of it, and then uh, always make sure you've got plenty of water all along the length of it. These stripes can get distorted very easily if they stick in certain spots, but not others. So make sure you, you, you get it all positioned properly and that uh, the area is nice and wet. Now, the um, decal just fits in between the wheel wells and it's got uh, angles at both ends in order to to uh, uh, finish that off so you're going to position it along the horizontal body uh, belt line stripe on the body while simultaneously placing it equidistant between the wheel wells so that there's an even gap on each end between the decal and the start of the wheel well uh, fender flares so once again Lots of fluids, plenty of liquid, and uh, go ahead and start positioning it so that it's in the proper place. Right now, I'm I'm trying to get it to cl closely follow that belt line, and if you pull it from either end, it keeps wrinkles from occurring. Uh, sometimes you need to actually put a finger on one end or something, and then and then kind of draw it across from in the other direction to straighten it out. As you see here, you can do that sometimes with, with your paintbrush. And sometimes, even after you've done that, you still may need to position your decal. So you can see here, I'm pulling it all, even though it's been cleaned up and all the water and air squeegeed out along to make sure that it's right in the center. Uh, you saw there that little piece of um, a decal that had kind of rippled up. So we're going to, uh, once again, smooth it out, uh, clean it up, and make sure that it's exactly in the right position. So uh, I'm going to put a thumb on it there and then give it a, a drag. Now it should be now it should be all set to start allowing it to dry. If you see any last minute corrections, do it now before it really starts sticking. So this will keep your main decals uh, looking good for the final um, uh, presentation of your model. And it's very important. They really add to it. So now that we've got that done, we're going to add um, a final um, solution to it to make sure that it fits the contours and molds into the body panel lines, etc. Uh, and that's using the second part of the two-part solution. Uh, most of them are two-part, some of them not, but uh, I use the two-part. It seems to be pretty effective and it works with most decals. Now I'm going to work on that back final underbody um, you know, panel, that black, flat black panel that goes around the whole bottom of the uh, Boss 351. It's, it's kind of a strangely shaped unit, but it actually fits just right uh, once you get it into the correct position. So uh, it needs to be pushed around, and then you're going to look at the line and how it would intercept uh, with the other body panel, lower panel. And then, of course, it's got some wrap around. Uh, once again, we'll be using our little um, our little cut line trick. Once it's kind of in a position and, and will stick there, okay, you can you can roll it over like that. Just touch it and roll it over the edges, and then use um, your hobby knife, a very sharp hobby knife, for all your decal work actually, to go ahead and uh, make sure that it uh, has enough relief so that it doesn't pucker. And next we'll add the uh, last piece of our body striping 
and uh, as you can see it's really going to set your model off the contrast of the orange and black is really striking as well uh, and go ahead and put down some setting solution and then of course soak your uh, your decal in some nice warm water make sure you got plenty of water on it and then uh, go ahead and slide it around get some adhesive uh, from the backing onto the back side go ahead and put it into position and what you're going to look for here of course is that it is lined up uh, with the same stripe line as the uh, main body stripe on the on the middle there so obviously you can make sure that it's positioned properly against the wheel well just like uh, same distance as the uh, uh, other one is from the wheel well itself and and also um, not too uh, close or too far from the back line and not too close to the marker light. Um, you can see what those look like in internet pictures, even on your box art. It shows a pretty good depiction of that. Um, so go ahead and put that into position. Once it's there, your body decaling is mostly done. Well, that's it for part one, where we show you most of your body detailing. And as you can see, it's stunning, just like the original, uh, with some nice foiling, uh, a good paint job, and some excellent decal positioning. You can really have an outstanding looking model, and uh, this one uh, really deserves it. It's a very nice model. I'm, I'm really proud of Ravel for coming out with uh, a new tool body of the 71 Boss 351. Uh, it's a nice niche vehicle from the muscle car era and uh, we're going to continue on later uh, in another part to show you the rest of construction and detailing but um, it starts here with a great looking body and once you get this in uh, done you can set it aside and let it completely dry out and harden to get ready for handling and construction of the rest of your model well, we hope you like this premium step-by-step -step model kit review, and so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the icon in the lower right of any of our reviews. Or you can find us on Facebook or our website, rightonreplicas.com. Thanks.